Hi, so good to see you this week. It is a makeup application and it's one that I think this audience might appreciate. How to apply makeup to make you look at least 10 years younger. The key is in the formulation. It's in the heavy handedness or in this particular case being a little bit more light handed and just mindful of certain rules that seem to apply once we hit a certain age. Also, the key is to not have this take up too much time. We don't want to spend forever looking like we have a more youthful glow. So I'm going to show you how to do this. I've got 10 steps that are very basic and easy to follow uh, that you can utilize. Uh, I bet you will even be able to utilize a lot of the products that you have right now. So first and foremost, I'm starting with a blank surface here and the key to a youthful glow is glowing skin and the way to achieve that is moisture and a more subtle coverage. So instead of thinking of a heavy formulation foundation, I want you to think a little bit more of a lighter dewy application and there are several ways that you can achieve that. You can break away from your foundation and switch over to a BB or a CC cream. The two that I've used repeatedly here are the Garnier Skin Active BB Cream and the IT Cosmetics CC Cream. Both of these have sun protection in them so you don't need to apply sunscreen. Or another trick that you can do is if you don't want to invest in a different product, take your current foundation and cut it in half with moisturizer. And that will give you a little bit more of a minimalistic look, a little bit more of a dewy finish as well. So there are many ways to make this happen and the key is obviously not breaking the budget while we do this. Um, I also have another little weapon in my arsenal and this is the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer Illuminating. And I will take this and mix a little bit in my foundation. It gives a bit of kind of a sun-kissed summery glow, a bit of a shimmer to it. Um, and the key is you don't want to overdo it with shimmer, but you do want a little bit of a glow going on. So I'm going to utilize the IT CC Cream and a little goes a long, long way with this stuff. So I'm going to do a, a pump and this color is medium. I sort of alternate between medium and tan. And I'm going to add a little bit of the Laura Mercier and just kind of mix it up. And here we go. Just using a brush to apply. The key is it'll give you some nice coverage. So you feel like you have something on your face but you want to be able to see your skin. And that's a big part of having that glow. And it's what we love so much in our younger kids, you know, our teenagers and 20 something girls, you know, their skin is just so beautiful and it has just a little bit of a sheen to it. So it's really just recreating that look and giving yourself a little bit of coverage at the same time. Okay. So now that that's going on, then I just bring it down on the neck as well. And that's it, pretty, pretty quick. Any, any residual, I just take from my hand. And I hate to leave some on my hand and not get it on my face. Um, alrighty. So from here, the next step, I forgot to pull this out of my drawer. Give me two seconds here. And that is a um, eyelid primer. And I think that's really important to give your eyelids a nice foundation and uh, something to help your makeup adhere to. So, and I will list everything for you in the description portion as always. Um, but this is just a great way to cut the redness in the eyelid and, uh, and provide a nice eyelid foundation for the eyeshadow, which will also be a very light, neutral application. But uh, you don't want any redness in your eyelid and uh, really want to start with an even palette. Okay, and I always take the, re the residual and just sweep a little bit under my eye. And this is a great trick to catch eye makeup that falls below. It will prevent things from moving south and, and tends to keep it northward, which we all love. Okay, so the next step is to hide discoloration. 
And for that, I'm using the Tarte Maracuja Creaseless Concealer. Um, it's my all-time favorite. A little bit goes a long way with this. So you're just going to want to um, go right in the under eye area, right here. And if you want, you can save this step for after eyeshadow if you feel like you get a lot of eyeshadow below the eye. And you can always clean up a little bit as well afterward. I'm not gonna set this with powder just yet, so if I need to add more, I will. But I'm really just taking and I'm pressing in the areas where there is discoloration and I want everything to, uh, to even out. And if you have any spots, any sunspots or whatever, you can always hit it there as well. Okay, next up on my list is um, filling in the brows a little bit. You don't want to create too heavy of a brow because we're going for a more of a natural pared down look here, a more youthful look. But as we get older, our brows tend to thin a little, so they need some help. And um, I'm just going to use this Anastasia uh, straw burn and a brush. And I'm just going to create some feather-like strokes with the brush. Okay, so you just go in and you follow your own brow line and it's going to be again very light but just giving the brows a little bit of a pop. I'm lucky with the um, brow tattooing that I've done and microblading it's a lot easier and quicker as you can see to just deepen and follow a line that's been created. I've always said this was one of the best investments in doing this. So if you're uh, on the fence, take it from me. It's been a really good choice. And I do find with my no makeup looks, I don't even feel like I need to do eyebrows at all. All right, so again, that's just giving our eyes some framework. And now what I'm going to do is move on to eyeshadow. And for this look, again, a very nice neutral matte palette. I love this Japanese eye palette. I've had it for a while now and I featured it on this channel, but as you can see, it's an array of very pretty neutral colors. So again, with a relatively light hand, I'm going to start with the lightest color and go on the inner corner of my eye and then up into the brow area. Same on the other side. Next up, I'm going to, I'm gonna utilize this bottom section here and I'm gonna start with this one on my eyelid. You just can't go wrong with, you know, just nice tans and browns. Khaki green, I use a lot because of the greenish color in my eyes. Um, a lot of you blue-eyed gals can use some gray here. So you've got some, some options. But the key is just a very light-handed approach to the eye makeup. We're just opening up the eyes, focusing really on the center portion of the lid, above into the crease, not going too far in with this medium shade. Okay. And I'm going to use this darker brown and we're, we're working our way out. So this is now going on the outer third portion of the eye. Okay. And last but not least will be the darkest color, really focusing on the outer lash line and then just a little, little bit out to the side. Just for some extra depth and definition there. Helps to create a wider eye look. You don't want to go too far out the side, but just a little blocking outside the, uh, the lash line here. Okay, and I'm going to take a blending brush and then I'm just gonna swirl it all together because the key is 
keeping it natural, no hard lines or edges. So just swirl and blend. And then I will follow up a little bit more highlighter right here. And just kind of clean up if there's anything below with the lighter color. So basically you're, you're looking at your eye as if it's cut into a third. So this third, this inner corner to right about here is your lightest. From the midsection to two thirds out would be your medium tone and your outer third is your darkest tone. That helps to create width in the eye and it opens things up. So that's the extent of the eyeshadow. You notice that I stayed above, nothing happened below. There's a reason for that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tight line the eye. So this is not the smoky eye where we do the waterline. That's a bit more of a dramatic look. The tight lining of the eye keeps your pencil basically in this upper lash line and it really defines that upper lash line and it creates an open look. So you're going to take a good liner, a nice, you can do a dark brown, you can do a black, either or, just depending on your lash and your skin color. And you go from the underside and you're basically pushing up. So let me push in a little closer so you can see. And I'm going underneath and I'm hugging my lashes and drawing in this black line. So it really makes your lash line stand out. And then just a tiny little whisk out to the side here. Same with the other eye. Going from the underside, so we're not going down because you, you ruin the eyeshadow here and you close off the eye by doing that. So underside, kind of smudging in the lash line and then a tiny little whisk out on the corner. And that is tight lining and it really, really opens up that lash. So now we're going to finish this off with mascara again upper lashes only. The reason why we focus on the upper instead of the lower is the minute you start putting shadow and mascara, you create the focus going downward and it creates a droop. We're trying to lift. So everything stays above. I've been such a huge fan of this mascara, the Thrive Cosmetics. Um, between that and the lash boost that I've been doing, it creates an incredible false lash effect or lash extension look. And with these two going on, I feel like I've got lash extensions on, but I don't. All right, and so our eyes are done. Now, what we're going to do is, you've got options here. If you have very dry skin, you may not wanna use any powder at all. Um, if you wanna control shine a little bit, very little powder. I'm doing the Laura Mercier um, translucent loose powder, but with a little brush. And I'm just gonna tone down the shine a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. But I'm not gonna do too heavy of a powder because I still wanna have that youthful glow. Okay, so the next up is uh, strobing or highlighting, contouring, depending on how you want to look at it. You've got options here. Um, I am going to pull out a couple of choices for you. If you want to stay on the matte side, if you feel like you're developing a lot of lines in this area and you don't want to use anything shimmery here, this Smashbox um, contour palette is a good option because it gives you ways to still contour, bring light up into the cheekbone area, a little bronzer. So this is a choice for you or you can do something that has a little bit of a shimmer. So it's, it's completely up to you in this area. But strobing as in highlighting and contouring is great for that sort of summer sun-kissed glow. So I'm going to use a bronzer and a brush and I'm going to do it, you know, it, you, you can go in here, but it, to make it easy for you, it's like doing a number three. You go here and here, here and here. So we take a little bit of bronzer and here and here. It's kind of where the where the sun gets you when you're outside. And what's good about doing bronzer under here is that it helps to accentuate the jawline. So we're doing our number three. And 
and it really just pops in a nice little glow. And you can also use bronzer if you if you want to sculpt or contour a little bit more in the cheek area, you can. That's up to you. But we're not doing any heavy carving, no dark contours or or things like that. Blush, 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 blush. So Again, a very light, peachy, pinky nude, nothing too bright. Uh, this is a color called Princess by Ulta. And, and we want to be careful not to do big apples right here because that can be very aging. So we want to keep the blush just hugging tight right along the cheekbone here on the side. So again, it's just a little bit of a whisk right here toward the side right along the cheekbone area, just to give you a hint of color. Again, like you've been outside playing around all day. And you can follow this up now with your, um, your choices of highlighter. If you want to do a powder highlighter, you can use a flat brush like this and run that right here. Or if you want, again, a little bit of a shimmer, you can use kind of a highlight stick. And instead of applying it directly, I'll take a little bit on my finger and then just smudge right here along the upper part of my cheekbone. And it just gives a little cheekbone pop, a little shimmer, but again, it's up to you to decide if you feel comfortable with a little shimmer or if you want matte. That's a completely personal decision. Okay, wow, we're almost done. Uh, next up would be lips. And for lips, again, the secret to having a more youthful look is to go lighter as we go older. Um, the darker colors can be very harsh. You know, I will limit those to maybe an evening look, especially in the winter time, but for the most part, I'm going lighter and I tend to like the peachy cream colors. So one of my absolute favorites is, hey, if I could read, is by Marc Jacobs and it's called In the Mood. And again, it's a real, real, peachy cream color, like I said. But before you apply lipstick, you definitely want a lip liner. And you want that as close to the lipstick shade as you can possibly get. And I'm fishing around here. Okay, hold on, bear with me. There it is. And again, this is by NYX. I will list everything in the description box, but this is a very nude color. Um, and it's just, it serves as a border and a boundary. So things don't bleed and move where they shouldn't move. We want everything to stay in place. So just follow along. Okay, follow it up with a light application. of the lipstick. And I like to hit it um, with just a little, 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 little bit of a goldish shimmer, but right in the middle. And it's a, uh, it's not a gloss. It's just a little bit of a, of a shimmer, which I, again, for me, since I use a little bit of a shimmery highlight, it all sort of plays in there and, and plays together. But this is a very simple, basic makeup application. Um, it, allows, it allows your skin to come through. It allows people to see your skin. Um, it, gives you, it gives you a bit of a glow. It gives you a little warmth to the face as we head into the spring and the summer months. Um, it's wonderful you know, to add these colors to the spring type tones that we're wearing. And you, know, you get a little bit of sun outside and it's just a very, I don't know, it's just a very warm, summery, sunny, fun feeling. Um, but again, all of these things help to lift, still create dimension in the face, but we're thinking lighter as we go older. We're thinking less is more. And we're playing around with what we have, but it's really being mindful in how we use what we have um, and not overdoing it. Uh, like I said, again, with my line of work, I have to overdo it because the lights and the camera cut through the makeup like that. Um, and I'm grateful that I had to learn all that stuff because it's given me a skill set to really learn how to recreate things. But it's so nice to be able to bring it back to natural and showcase what you have, celebrate what you have, um, and then to be able to take it to that next level. 
um, and kind of surprise yourself. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope it's maybe got you thinking how I can reuse and, and, and rethink my application and my colors and placement and all of that. Um, if you have some wonderful tips and tricks that you use to help you let your inner glow through and, um, and really kind of downplay age, please put it out there. Uh, I know my base here would love to hear from you. And again, we are such a great community. We are content sharers. We are supporters, encouragers, and, and I love how we lift one another on this platform. So I thank you for being here. I thank you for following me on social media, and I look forward to seeing you next week. As I always say, go out, be bold, be blessed, and enjoy. Thank you.